Good evening and welcome back to our children's virtual program book tasting where I read the first few pages of books in the children's collection and welcome back we have not had a book tasting in about a month or so we took a bit of a break to wrap up our summer program so I am so happy to be back and with that being said our book for this evening is another diary of a wimpy kid book cabin fever and this is probably my favorite book in the series um it just reminds me of the snowy days during the holidays and when you had off for school and you got to spend time with your family the authorities are closing in but when a surprise blizzard hits the hefley family is trapped indoors greg knows that when the snow melts he's going to have to face the music but could any punishment be worse than being stuck inside with your family for the holidays? Alrighty, as always, I will be reading the first few pages. Most people look forward to the holidays, but the stretch between Thanksgiving and Christmas just makes me a nervous wreck. If you make a mistake in the first 11 months of the year, it's no big deal. But if you do something wrong during the holiday season, you're going to pay for it. It's too much pressure to be on your best behavior for a whole month. The most I can really handle is six or seven days in a row. So if they move Thanksgiving to the week before Christmas, it would be fine by me. Kids whose families don't celebrate Christmas are lucky because they don't have to stress out whenever they do something wrong at this time of the year. In fact, I have a few friends in that category who I think act a little extra jerky around this time of year because they can. The thing that really makes me nervous is this whole Santa issue. The fact that he can see you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake really creeps me out. I'm not really convinced that Santa has the time to keep an eye on you 24 hours a day anyway. I figured he can only check on each kid once or twice a year for a few seconds. And with my luck, it happens to be the most embarrassing moments. If Santa really does see everything you do, then I can be in trouble. So when I write him, I don't say what I want for Christmas and all that. I use my letters to paint myself in the best possible light. Then there's this naughty or nice list they're always talking about. You hear about it, but you never actually get to see it. So it's up to grown-ups to tell you where you stand at any given moment. And something about that just doesn't seem right. I kind of wonder how accurate the list really is anyway. There's a kid named Jared Pyle who lives up the street from me. And if there's anyone who deserves to be on the naughty list, it's him. But last year, he got a dirt bike for Christmas. So don't even ask me what Santa was thinking on that one. It's not just Santa I've got to worry about either. Last year, mom was going through some old boxes and she found a homemade doll from her childhood. And mom said the doll is called Santa Scout and that his job is to watch how kids behave and then report back to Santa at the North Pole. Well, I'm not a fan of that idea. First of all, I think you have a right to privacy in your own home. And second, Santa Scout gives me the willies. I don't really buy the idea that this doll is feeding Santa information, but just in case, I try to be extra good whenever I'm in the same room as Santa Scout. But it probably doesn't matter anyways, because my older brother, Roderick, is constantly feeding Santa Scout bad information about me. Every morning when I wake up, Santa Scout is in a new place, which I guess is supposed to prove that he traveled to the North Pole overnight. But I'm starting to wonder if it's really Roderick who moves him. Alrighty, I am ending it there. If you are interested in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Cabin Fever it is available inside the children's collection. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next week for a new book.